good morning everybody and welcome to our course on introduction to micro mechanical machining in the last class we have seen some of the aspect of the error in the machining processes and we have seen that there are no any component which are very perfect so we have to identify or we have to put some criteria so that we can accept a particular part so we have seen different different criteria first one was the tolerance by which you can actually uh, accept or reject the component if the dimension you want a 10 mm if it is within the 10.24 or 10 to 9 point something then you can accept the part another thing was the roughness if roughness is acceptable within a particular range then you can accept that component third one was the shape because if there is a shape deformation is there that means if you want a perfect sphere and it is little bit deviated out of that sphere then you can reject that part and another one was the property related to the material if you are functionalizing any material then if your properties are within a particular range then you can accept those particular components another thing we have seen that what are the ways you can spend the money on to the uh, component that means cost versus performance was one of the criteria so here we have seen that you have to always stay into this leading edge so that you can get more amount of performance compared to the cost and time you are spending into the getting system more ready then we have seen that we have to also focus not only cost and time but we have to also finalize that which is the direction or which is the error which is important to remove or which, which is important to minimize so there are many errors but some errors can be neglected which may not play important role during the fabrication or after fabrication so you pay more attention to the sensitive direction where your machine stiffness should be very very high now machining error generating processes so what is happening here then first we have to identify the what are the sources of error right so mostly sources of error are geometrical errors and under is the cutting process error drive error and the environmental error what is the geometric error so geometric errors are mostly related to the structure of the machine and it is mostly related to the, the machine tool and cutting is that when you operate a machine at that time you are end up with some type of cutting operation so your uh, machine is in dynamic condition now there are forces there are acceleration deceleration of the cutting tool in different different motion and then there are high heat generation so those things create some problem in the error and then there are drives so drives means the table and your cutting uh, tool which is moving up and down so those are called drives which uh, move oh, the slides and all the things environment mostly it is related to temperature variation humidity variation and what things are located here climate conditions so those things are related to this so these are the different sources of errors now second is the mechanical system that how these thing errors are affected in this direction so geometrical error are mostly related to the machine so this is the machine tool what machine tools consist of machine tool consist of the table spindle and the structure in this case so geometrical error are mostly connected with this particular thing because these are the table and the structure is always a stationary structure so if you are not getting a orthogonality between x y and z direction then you are end up with a some type of problem so these are what is required in this particular direction right all the things should be perpendicular to each other so if those things are not there there are some other problems then you are end up with some geometrical errors what are the other components here so under one is the workpiece because we know that machine tool is a stand alone component but there are two other things which we are adding into that depending on the uh, selection of the uh, machining operations one is the workpiece so that we are adding because we want to shape this particular thing and why we are shaping that we need a tool also because the tool and workpiece these both things are the selection based and depending on the what is the specification of your machine tool and these things are already inbuilt into the machine tool so cutting tool uh, cutting error drive error environmental error that is directly connected with this also and it may it may be connected with this also so these are the error sources where this will this error will pro occur those things are this because in the mechanical system this is the only things which are standard available now if you add some camera or you add some microscope or you add some force sensor those things are actually the supplementary things but that cannot be considered during this particular uh, error generation mechanism then error generating processes what are these things 
So, this is the static deformation because in static deformation what happens that if you are not doing any machining operation or anything because of the ag of this machine tool then what happens there is a static deformation in the structure static deformation in the table also in that way you are end up with some type of problems. Then dynamic deformation that when you are machining operation you are cutting a work piece by a tool and then it is in dynamic situation. So, now forces occurs vibration occurs and how your machine tool will tackle those type of dynamic situation that everything depends on what is the error during the dynamic deformation. Thermal deformation because thermal deformation occurs without operating machine or with operating machine. If it is operating the machine then heat generation will be very very high because you are cutting a one material in uh, by a friction or shear force and that will increase the temperature at the cutting zone and that temperature will propagate through the different different components. Other than that once you cut the material chip also carries some temperature and that when chip is falling at that particular location also temperature will be very very high. So, you have to identify the thermal deformation or the uh, higher temperature zone and you have to insulate or the isolate those particular things. So, that the temperature will not be propagated inside the system. Rotation accuracy because that is related to spindle mostly because when you rotate a spindle mostly it should be in the eccentric with the uh, spindle uh, housing. If it is not like that then what happens there is a run out dynamic run out is there then static run out is there. So, those particular things will create a problem and it will generate some error during the process. Guiding accuracy, guiding accuracy is mostly related to the motion of the tool workpiece that is by means of a table because table workpiece is loaded on the table and the tool is loaded on the z axis. There is also guiding uh, system which is moving your tool up and down. So, that is called z axis. So, their accuracy is also important because all three axes should be perpendicular to each other as, as close as possible. So, that is also one of the source of errors. Dynamic movement error. So, when you are uh, this is dynamic deformation that is in operation and this dynamic movement error that when you are doing machining and you are moving your workpiece from one location to another location. So, this is your tool, this is your workpiece and this is your tool and tool is penetrating inside the workpiece and then you are moving to cut down this much amount of material. Right? So, when you are moving at that time if there is some problem with a guiding accuracy that your your all the three axes are not perpendicular to each other at that time your material removal rate little bit higher or lower depending on the angle at which your uh, x y and z axes are deviated. So, depending on that you will get a dynamic movement error and that movement error will directly affect the life of your cutting tool and the quality of the workpiece which you are getting either it will be rejected or you have to do some rework to get that thing correct. Then the tool wear is also one of the things because you cannot avoid the tool wear, but you can actually minimize the tool wear by setting a optimization optimized parameter for this particular uh, machine tool. So, in that way these are the different error generating processes and what you are finally getting what is our objective that we should get a very very high contour accuracy. Contour accuracy that means suppose you are want to you want to get a circular component or it is a cylindrical component. So, it should be a cylinder only it should not be a some type of cone or positive way or the negative way. So, that is called contour accuracy. Surface roughness is important because we have seen that we have different different criteria for acceptance of the component because error cannot be uh, we cannot produce a perfect part. So, contour was shape was one of the things surface roughness was the other thing and dimensional accuracy that is how much what is the tolerance level within that part. So, here we are not talking about the material properties because that is under criteria not connected with the machine tools. So, here what we have to do that first we have to find out that what is the problem in our part. Suppose, you are not getting a uh, uh, surface roughness is not exactly the requirement you are getting a contour is also ok dimensionals are also acceptable. So, first if you are getting a surface roughness then you have to actually go back side. So, which parameter is affecting the surface roughness. So, you have to go in this direction the suppose your tool is worn and still you are going uh, continuing that particular uh, machining operation then there is a chance that tool wear is a one of the 
things which is creating a rough surface. Then once it is identified, it is a tool wear, then go to this uh, back side again, then which is the mechanical system which is creating a tool wear. So, here one is the tool which is directly connected under is the workpiece also there because if the workpiece is very very hard and you are putting a speed feed and depth of cut so these are the parameter speed feed and depth of cut you are selecting a very very aggressive value of this then what happens your tool wear will be very very high and machine tool what we are doing we are directly connected with this thing so again you have to identify out of these three options that which one is responsible for the tool wear. Once you identify that thing, suppose all the three are uh, playing important role, then you have to find out that which one is more, then if it is a machine tool by spend, uh, speeding, uh, speed feed in depth of cut setting, you can do some changes there. If everything is fine, there may be a chance of a geometric error. So, then you can actually back calculate in this direction and find out uh, what is the source of error. And then you spend time and cost for uh, correcting this particular uh, error source. Now, geometric errors on the machines. Now, these are the two configuration of the machines. So, this first one is the 3 axis machine and this one is the 5 axis machine. So, why 3 axis? Because now we can move table uh, workpiece in x direction, y direction here and z direction here. Additional 2 axis here are the one is the a axis a axis means the rotation around the x axis and the c axis suppose you want to rotate your workpiece not the tool, tool rotation is already there, but the when you want to rotate your workpiece then what you have to do you have to put an under motor for rotation of that because we know that this particular rotation is along the axis of the z. So, that is why it is called c axis. Now, still there is one axis left that is called y axis if you are putting one more motor and if you swing this particular all stage then what you are telling that you are actually moving or tilting this particular table that is in this direction. So, that is called B axis. So, depending on the requirement you can actually design a micro machining center with a different uh, uh, axis freedoms. So, accurate part can only be achieved by a control or the deterministic manufacturing processes. Now, what does it mean that first thing is a control. How you can control your thing that suppose you have one machine and you have lot of feedback controllers. So, if you are moving from one location to another location, it is perfectly telling that your tool is moved from this to this location. So, this is your tool and it is moving from here to here. So, those are called the feedback controllers. Feedback controllers. So, what are those things? Those are the encoders. Right. So, rotary encoders are there that will find out the rotation of how many rotations are there depending on what is the translation. Linear encoders are also there. So, that will directly calculate the linear motion of that. So, those are called the feedback controllers. So, by feedback controller you can actually control your process even if you have some type of backlash within the drive or something then this particular encoders will take care about these particular problems. Another thing is a deterministic manufacturing process deterministic manufacturing process that suppose you are setting a parameter for a suppose you have a three component that is a depth of cut then rpm of tool and feed rate right and you have a one material or the workpiece and plus tool you have selected one particular thing and you are getting one component out of this machine component machine component. So, first experiment you are doing this thing this is experiment number 1 you are doing experiment number 2 again with the same parameter and if you are getting the same thing here again then that means it is called the deterministic manufacturing that means you are not changing any parameter of the machine tool or the workpiece or tool combination every time you are getting a same component that means your process is deterministic. So, in that case if you are not putting any control or feedback controller still your machine in such a condition that is always give a accurate part. Accurate part means within the acceptable limit. Right? 
right. So, we uh, that we can tell that geometric accuracy of the part can be achieved either by a feedback loop through the part metrology. So, this is the feedback loop. Now, if you see, so there are many different different components available. This is the tool is available here and the workpiece is here. So, these are the main things which is connecting the whole the thing. So, now spindle is there. So, spindle if you have put a uh, variable frequency drive, you can get the uh, feedback from the spindle RPM also. How much is the uh, RPM of the spindle during actual operation? These are the movement in the z direction that is the in a z guide way. If you are putting a optical encoder here linear encoder, then it will give you a signal of that thing that how much is the movement in this direction. X axis drive is available then there is a y axis drive. So, this particular movement will tell you the what is the actual position of your work piece on a machine tool. Depending on that there are different construction part is also available. So, this is the construction loop or the structural loop through which you can get the thing. So, if you have a very good feedback control then you can get the geometrically correct component or if that is the case then under way you can get by calibrated machine tool. Calibrated that means you know that if you have machine a component that we have seen in earlier slide that if you machine a component with a fixed parameter you continue with the fixed parameter and every time you are getting the same component that means your machine is calibrated. You do not have so much of deviation which will reject the part or it will which will deviate the part even if you have all the uh, input conditions are constant. So, that is the way if both the things are there it is a more perfect more more much better than anything else because you are getting a feedback also through the metrology part. Metrology part that means you can kind of measure the surface roughness also in that if you have a roughness tester located here. If you have camera here directly you can actually analyze the uh, tool wear also what is the parts geometry. So, these are called the metrology instrument which will help you to monitor the machine tool as well as workpiece and the tool even when it is in motion or when it is in machining condition. So, if both the things are much preferred, but if one of them is absent then you have to rely completely on the other component you have to make that particular uh, things very very strong. So, that you can get the required geometrical accuracy into part. Now, sources of geometry error. So, first let us take the geometric error that means, what are the sources of error in the uh, x y z direction or the movement of the axis is only. Let us not go to the other way in the tool side or the workpiece side. So, accuracy of the machine tool is affected by many sources. So, if you see this particular thing now you can understand that this should be the exactly straight line. If this is the straight line this should be also perpendicular to this part and this should be perpendicular to this one and this should be perpendicular to this one. So, this is the this should be the actual condition, but what happens that you have a external vibration distortion and foundation problem. So, your base or the foundation is little bit skewed away and that is the problem that because of this uh, deformation of this foundation even if this all the three this thing this thing and this things are right angle to each other. But because of this problem what happened that this whole thing will move in the other direction. So, this whole thing will move in this direction now even if it has contained a 90 degree part. So, this is also 90 degree, this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree, but this particular line is move from this to this area one th particular angle. So, whole thing is distorted. Now, there is a thermal fluctuation. So, if this particular thing is perfectly correct. Now, this is a straight line there is no problem in that. So, whole thing is correct and now thermal deformation occurs here. So, this will little bit bend and this whole thing will also expand depending on the temperature effect or the temperature part. So, now this is completely something like that and this is creating a problem. So, now these things are not right angle to each other and that will create a problem. Then Another thing the motion and positioning error suppose this particular is the z axis and z axis is right now it is little bit inclined here. Because consider that your workpiece is very very hard and you are moving this particular uh, workpiece in this direction correct and your tool is not able to remove that material very very uh, high way then what happened that your uh, tool will bend here and when tool will bend it will create extra force here in this case 
and few because whatever you are looking at this particular deviation this is not so high, but right now it is very very exaggerated view of the small small deformation and that is what is important to understand here at this location. So, now coming to that uh, down now once it is in workpiece and this location now consider this is all things are correct no problem in that and then you are doing a machining operation. So, machining operation also create a reaction forces there are load because you have mounted a very heavy uh, workpiece on the ta uh, table heavy vice is available which is fixing the component then because of that additional load your uh, foundation may get deformed at a micron level and when you are getting a forces forces again propagate in this direction this load and vibration will propagate in this direction and then again it will close the loop and because of this uh, structural loop deflection you are end up with the errors. So, what are the sources of errors? The first is the kinematic errors that means your axes are not right angle to each other that is what is required. So, this thing should be orthogonal that is the one thing. Secondly, thermomechanical error the temperature effect because of the climate condition also and because of the machining operation. These are the two different sources through which you will get a term temperature difference within the system. Loads, loads means it is a stationary load also another thing is a when you do machining there is a force also and that will also consider as a dynamic for dynamic load which will also create a problem in the spindle system as well as in the other structural component. And the dynamic force or so this load is a stationary load and this what force dynamic force we are talking these forces are the reaction force or some forces which occurs during machining operation that means when your machine is in running condition at that time you will encounter this dynamic forces. So, these are the different different forces which will create a problem in the geometry of the machine. So, first is the kinematic error. So, what is kinematic error? So, it is due to imperfect geometry alignment and dimension of the machine component. So, suppose you have a complete structure of the machine and if its geometry is imperfect that means whatever dimension you are creating that suppose you have a uh, whatever this cantilever beam is that it is a square section or it is a circular section or it is other than any uh, these two shapes then its dimension should be perfectly within the allowance or within the tolerance limit. Alignment is also a problem because we know that everything should be perfectly in alignment so that you your spindle axis is always in a vertical straight uh, direction not to the anything other than the straight thing and the dimension of the machine component because that will directly depend on this alignment because if you are not exactly the dimension you will not get the assembly assembly problem correct and if there is alignment problem then you will not get the perfect combination of the different different component. So, they are stable or changing slowly over time. Now, whatever this kinematic errors are there sometimes what happens that initially you are not getting those things, but they are stable also, but as the time passes what happens you are doing machining with a different different parameter setting sometimes the forces are also very very high at the time what happens over the time this will start playing important role. So, that is because of the due uh, due to the foundation drift what is the drift? So, drift is a deviation due to edge that means whatever is this deformation due to edge or we can say it deformation with respect to time. If your machine is very very old then you will get a foundation drift. So, foundation drift means foundation is never in motion. So, it is always in stationary part, but because of this many things you are doing on the foundation machining is there you are mounting a very very heavy vice or heavy workpiece on the top then removing it again again you are mounting. So, those things are playing important role in the steady or the status of the foundation uh, what is the uh, current status of the foundation and wear or the material edging because all the materials whatever you are using using in the construction of the machine tool 
it may get wear because of the aging. Aging means as with respect to time, you are getting this material in a very very unstable condition. So you may get some type of kinematic errors after a long time. And also by collision because we know that when you do machining at a very very high rate. Now suppose your cutting tool is here and your workpiece is here at this location, and you want to remove these old things. So, you start with the cutting tool here and then right now you are moving from here to here there is no any type of machining. So, it is called free machining. So, free machining and as soon as it is touching this particular part then it will do actual machining. So, from here to here as soon as it is coming into contact you will get a very very uh, high force in sudden highest force jumping in there. So, you have a spindle system here. So, this spindle system will this particular force will be in this direction. So, your spindle will try to move in this direction. So, after your whole thing is moved here and now you want to cut a under depth here. So, now your location of the cutting tool is here. Again you have one free time here or the free machining here or air cut air cutting. So, here no force and then you are suddenly striking the this location and your spindle system is here at that time you are cutting in this direction then your forces will be in this direction. So, if you move like here and there many times because one day you are supposed doing such type of machining in 10 parts or 100 parts every time this will be also considered as a collision. So, this particular small small things also play important role in the uh, maintaining or the stabilizing this particular kinematic errors. Then thermomechanical error. So, what are the thermomechanical the internal and external heat sources in the machine may lead to thermomechanical deformation of machine component and then it leads to the kinematic error. Because we have seen that we have a full construction here that is in x, y and z direction. Yeah, so, this is the work piece, this is the tool, this is the construction. Now, because of this uh, temperature difference what will happen this particular thing has some coefficient of alpha here, this one has one uh, thermal coefficient alpha, this one also and every component has a different different thermal coefficient coefficient of thermal expansion. So, if the materials are different then all materials have different different coefficient of thermal expansion and depending on the temperature variation your part will expand or contract differently. So, at the end what are the location it will create a problem. So, these are the location where it may create a problem because it may bend in uh, in right side or the uh, left side or right side then your whole total uh, geometric uh, stability will be reduced. So, now let us see one video here where it is showing that how this particular thing works. So, this is the company uh, Okuma they are making uh, this particular uh, system for temperature uh, thermoflandy concept that is what we, uh, we are looking at right now. So, what is uh, what is this thing that you can actually control the deformation within a 0 0.1 micron control. So, if your tool is deviating from one uh, within a 0 0.1 micron then you can actually control within that part. Intelligent machine construction, so construction also play important that if it is a symmetric structure then the deformation will be symmetric your tool will always be in the center. So, temperature equalization is important because whatever is the ambient temperature condition your machine will actually respond to that temperature deformation. So, this is first thing that how machine will take care of. So, this is the installation space of the machine and this is the temperature variation. Now, if you see this particular thing your temperature of the whole machine is within a particular zone if there is you will not find any gray, uh, orange spot or the red spot. So, this is the external when you are changing the temperature of the climate still your machine is in the same 
temperature. Machine adapts to the ambient temperature changes. Intelligent machine construction. So, how your machine you are constructing that is important here. Right. If you see this thing, whole thing is at the if you consider this, you draw one particular line from here. If you see this, both the things are symmetric in this case. What is the advantage that now, if even if there is a thermal uh, deformation or the thermal expansion, this particular thing will expand in all the directions. So, your whatever is the location of this particular spindle, it will not be changed. So, that is the advantage of a thermal symmetric structure. Right. So, these ribs are important. Now, see the temperature is moving up here, but still you are in the same direction thermally symmetric structure. And this is the box build structure. So, this whole thing is not a, a solid structure. Now, if you see from the cross section, you will find lot of ribs. So, this will help in dissipation of the temperature because we know that now area increases here in this case and that is the reason you can actually do a predictable deformation here. So, whatever deformation you can predict it and this is thermal insulation. What is the importance of thermal insulation that when you are doing machining there is a heat generation some heat will go to the Right. So, this is the chip which are falling here in this location and this is the temperature zone high temperature zone. So, you are end up with this temperature and what you have to do you have to provide one insulation here. So, chip will not be created any problem in the heating of the different component of the machine tool. And then this is the last one this is the 0.1 micron deformation control. So, here what you need you need sensors which will sense the temperature variation. So, right now this is your target position but be it is in ambient temperature. Now, suppose you have a variation in the temperature and because of that what is happening here that your target is little bit shifted here that is at toward 0.1 micron that is called 100 nanometer. So, what this machine does that it has a temperature sensor here. So, that temperature sensor will find out this particular temperature sensor spindle operation data. It will do calculation of the displacement here that how much is the displacement because of the temperature variation. So, that displacement will directly do a compensation signal and that will go to the axis control and once you can get this thing again it will calculate the original location and then you can do the machining. So, there are lot of advantage of doing this particular things because you can actually reduce the total variable time. So, here if it is without this thermoplanity concept then you have to measure temperature throughout the operation here you do first measurement then it will take care about everything you have to do one thing only here. Then this is the no compensation within the compensation you can actually maintain the x axis displacement within one range and you cannot get any type of stability problem here. So, these are the different advantage of using this particular system. So, let me finish this lecture here and we will continue this lecture or this topic further in the next class. Thank you.